spoke a word and you were singing over me you have been so so
right now we're going to partake of communion as a part of our worship service. And I just want to share this scripture verse with you. And I love the words of Jesus, you know, especially right now in the moment that we're in, in our nation, in our world, and even in our lives spiritually, you know, God has been doing so many deep and amazing things in our hearts. And I know that you can feel that too. You know, we've come to a place in our life where maybe what we used to live like and what we used to depend on isn't enough anymore. And I just know that God wants you to hear these words today that He alone is enough. He alone is all that we need. He is our peace. He is our strength. He is our song in the night. And so as we are taking communion, I'd love to invite you to just get something from around your house to partake of communion with us. And somebody's going to actually be even bringing me a cup. So that would be awesome. But I'm going to read this scripture. John 6, 53 says this. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And you know, it's so easy as Christians and as people to depend on the wrong things, right? I know that I do in my life. I depend on things that I can just easily access. And it's pretty amazing when this world begins to shut down, we begin to have to start stripping away things and we realize what's truly important. And I know in my own life, I've recognized my own frailty in a way that I wouldn't be able to recognize if I was just living in the comfort like I usually live in, but things have been stripped. And you know what, I'm thankful for that because it's brought me closer to the one thing that sustains me, the one thing that gives me life, and his name is Jesus. And the Bible says that as we partake of communion, we're stopping and we're considering a holy moment and we're saying, Jesus, the bread that I'm about to partake of is a symbol of your body that was broken for me. And the wine that I'm about to partake of is a symbol that as your body dripped blood from the cross, it dripped so that I could be made whole. It dripped so that I could be saved. He's our savior, not just for heaven, but for right now. And so right now, I love this scripture verse, how it says, unless you stop and you eat of my body and you drink of my blood, you have no life. And what that tells me is when we begin to drink of the body, eat of the body and drink of the blood, we receive life. And so right now I'm gonna pray over these elements and I'd just like you to hold them up. If you've got your children, hold them up too. And let's stop and, and let's fix our eyes on Jesus and let's come into communion with him. So just hold the bread up. Jesus, we take a moment and we just thank you for the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Jesus, right now, we say that we are not enough without you. And we declare right now that as we take of this bread, we declare that you alone are our life. You're everything that we're not. You give us the grace for today and tomorrow and the day after that. And because of that, we partake of this bread. Just eat the bread with us. surrender to you that without you we are not enough but with you we are all that we need to be because your strength is perfect in our weakness and we thank you for your blood that was shed so that we could be set free we could be healed we could be protected from disease and we could have life everlasting and because of this promise we drink right now and we agree with your promise in Jesus name let's drink the wine Good 
can earn it I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Wow! What a powerful time of worship. I'm so thankful that our worship team, production team, doesn't just film it, but they actually capture the presence of God and God's glory goes from, in a sense, the sanctuary into your house. And I'm so thankful for that. This Sunday, Wave LA is Palm Sunday. Yep, I got my palm branches ready. Come on, maybe at home, you can get the kids and you get your palm tree branches ready and it's such a significant Sunday in the history of church and the history of Jesus. Those palms were actually brought out and waved to Jesus and the crowds yelled Hosanna. And why that's so significant is because the Bible says that it was actually fulfilling Old Testament prophecies about who the Messiah was gonna be. And you know what? Today, it's the same thing. As we begin to worship and we begin to praise, we're doing the same thing. We're declaring that, come on, our praise is prophetic. What we're declaring is going to happen in the name of Jesus. And I can't think of a better time to be prophetic in our praise than right now. Come on, we're declaring things like, He's a way maker. Come on, we're declaring things like he's our healer. We're declaring things like Christ alone, our cornerstone. We are not just singing words to a song, but we are prophetically declaring that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and King. And so I'm just so thankful for the worship team creating that atmosphere that we can also bring in to our own home. I just want to welcome you, Wave LA. I think this is week four of quarantine online church and obviously we miss you so much I miss saying things like nine o'clock service you're so much better than the 11 and I I miss saying things like high five 17 people before you're seated all of those things we'll do in the future but there are some good things about having church online I know my family we've all been watching together and sometimes we're just <laughs> hairs all messed up haven't even brushed our teeth yet but we are getting into God's Word and we're doing community together love commenting on Facebook live and even today come on give us some comments let us know where you're watching from how your family's doing what we can pray for you for we love and miss every single one of our Wave Church family members and uh, today is gonna be a great day and uh, have so many different things we've got a great great message for you today also have an incredible time again for the kids at the end of the service the feedback that we've gotten is that that has just been phenomenal also just want to thank you so much for your generosity and your giving during this time we understand the sacrifice that you're making but also the priority you're putting onto God's house and so there are so many different ways that you can give and you can uh, text by giving you can give online uh, and I, one of the scripture verses that I love is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and it says that there is a season to sow and there's a season to reap and I think that sometimes when we read that story we're thinking that it's this time for this and then another season for that but you know I would encourage you in the season that we're in right now let's believe for both let's believe that while we sow it's also going to be the season that we reap, that God is gonna do some miracles. You know, I was talking to one of the people on our production team this week, and he was mentioning to me how thankful he was that God had gotten them him a position that he didn't have before and just recently got, and he now has that as an ongoing source. And it was kind of like, you know what? He's always sowed, but now he actually is sowing and he's reaping. And I just believe that's not just for him, 
and his family, I believe it's for all of ours. And so make sure during this season that you have that mentality. Hey, I'm sowing, but you know what? I'm also reaping. I'm believing God is going to provide miracles in my life. Again, so thankful for your generosity. And you can go and, you know, uh, download the app and give, a text to give, so many different options available. Also, you can even click the link uh, below in the comments. And uh, we're just, again, praying for you, believing for you, and so thankful for you during this season. Also, today is the first Sunday of the month. Come on, it's, it's Palm Sunday. Woo, woo. These things are sharp out. Uh, not only is it Palm Sunday, but it is also the first Sunday of the month. And the first Sunday of the month, we always have our senior pastor, Pastor Steve Kelly, in from Virginia Beach speaking to all of our campuses. And he told me this week, he has got a word for us. And so we're so excited to be getting Pastor Steve speaking to all of our campuses and immediately after his message, we'll be joining you and doing prayer requests and talking to you about what is coming up like Easter's and all the other things that are happening. Love you. Come on, get ready for Pastor Steve Kelly. Well, today we're speaking live to all of our campuses online and to our Wave Church family worldwide. And I actually have a message for us today that I know is going to speak to us and challenge us and again, motivate us to keep our focus on Christ. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, if you have your Bible, to Luke chapter 8 and verse 22. We're going to read from the NIV from verse 22 to 25. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got in the boat and they set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. I don't know about you, but I would rather at least have Jesus asleep in my boat than not have him in my boat at all. And it says, and a squall came down uh, so that the boat was being swamped. In other words, a storm. And they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him up. Master, master, we're going to drown. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm subsided. Now, remember last week, Paul couldn't stop that storm. But in this one, Jesus rebukes the storm and the whole storm stops. And, and listen to what Jesus said now. Um, and all was calm. And it says, where is your faith? Jesus asked them. And the Bible says his disciples in fear and in amazement asked one another, who is this man? Who is he that he commands even the wind and the water and they obey him? So I want to, I just thinking about a time when I was flying from Rome, Italy, back to Washington, D.C. And I remember being on that airplane and it was a long time ago now. And I was uh, flying with someone else that was traveling with me, a young Bible college student. And we actually had tornadoes all off the East Coast, which is kind of rare for tornadoes to make its way this far across the country. But on this particular uh, day, that was the case. And we were literally circling for hours. It's probably only a seven, maybe eight hour flight. Um, depends which way you're going. I think six hours one way, eight the other. And, uh, and I remember we were up there for several more hours, a couple of more hours, and everybody had to be seated. Everybody had to have the seat belts on. And literally passengers were screaming. The airline staff were terrified. And I can honestly tell you, I sat on that plane and thought to myself, everybody on this plane should thank God I'm on this plane. I actually believe I've got unfulfilled destiny. I believe that God, the Bible says without a vision, people perish. And I'm looking at this storm and they are accusing Jesus of not caring. And look, look what the Bible says here. Jesus asked the disciples, where is your faith? And I believe in light of what we're facing right now, in COVID-19, I believe that's a good question for you and I to answer that question. Where is your faith? Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. And of course, we know on the other side, Jesus knew where he was going. There was a man who was possessed by many demons, whose name was Legion. His name wasn't Legion, but the amount of demons that possessed this man identified themselves as legion. 
But the Bible says, as Legion, it says, where is your faith? And Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And let's act, he didn't tell them about Legion. He just said, let's go to the other side. So they acted on the words of Jesus and they launched out. They've done this before. This is not unfamiliar territory. This is not even uncharted waters. And they're on their way. They weren't expecting any interruptions. And Jesus goes to sleep. I actually wonder if he did that deliberately. The storm, the Bible says, was like a whirlwind starting at the bottom. It says in other translations, it was devastating, dangerous. The boat was being filled rapidly with water. Actually, if you look this up in the book of Mark, it's hilarious. They actually woke him up and say, Master, Master, don't you care? I mean, they've been with Jesus now long enough to know he cares, but so powerful was this storm. They actually said, Jesus, don't you care? Have you ever accused God of not caring in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your trial, in the middle of your adversity? And even right now, I'm looking at sometimes even the media kind of laughing at believers who acknowledge their faith in God and their trust in God in this season. And so look what we see here. The first thing we see here is this amazing outburst. And and, and I just want to say it again, adversity introduces you to yourself. I heard someone say years ago, and I've, I've never forgotten it, never waste a crisis. Take a time to look and reflect and listen to what the Word says. It says, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In a moment of panic, in a moment of fear or shock, we blurt out what's really in us. And when our defences are down, our mouth speaks out what's really inside of us. And so I want to encourage you and I in this season that we're in. Let's actually understand and never waste anything that's happening in life. And what is God trying to teach you? What is God trying to teach me? You heard someone say, this always happens to me. I always get the long line in the, in, well, you just might get a long line nowadays in a supermarket, in a grocery store. But, you know, I always get cut off and I, that, this always happens to me. Can I just say to you, those words are locating something in you when the defences are down. But look what Jesus does. We find out what's in the disciples out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But Jesus, the Bible says, they woke him up. I'm not a morning person. I do not like getting up in the morning. I get up. I've disciplined myself. I've learned what it is to do that. But I'm not that guy that if you want me praying my most powerful prayers, it's not right when you wake me up. So the worst time I think to pray is when you're woken out of a deep sleep. What kind of sleep was this? That Jesus actually fell asleep in this kind of a storm. And the Bible says He speaks peace and He rebukes the storm. So the first thing we see is an outburst from the disciples. They're locating themselves with their words. But the second thing is Jesus takes authority over this. And I want to encourage you now in the middle of what's happening right now in this season, COVID-19. Don't be so well versed on what's happening around the country and so updated with everything that's happening that you've actually lost sight of taking authority over what is the what's happening in their world. Let's be people who do what Jesus says. It says he rebuked the storm. You can't rebuke impersonal, inanimate things. And so there's something more going on behind the scenes. The word rebuke means he assessed the nature of it. He passed judgment on it. He censored it. And Jesus identified on the back of that storm, satanic activity. And when he rebuked the storm, he censored it. He assessed the nature of it. He passed judgment on it and the storm had to obey because the devil was on the back of that storm. And the storm sat down because Jesus knew he was going to the other side to pray for a man to be set free who was demon possessed by many demons. The devil knew Jesus was coming. The poor old disciples, they got no idea. And so here I want, to, I want to encourage you that sometimes something comes out of nowhere, a storm, and we actually maybe in our marriage and maybe in our finances and maybe in our health and, 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 and we can actually spend all that time trying to deal with it. 
with flesh and blood, but sometimes we got a rebuke. We got a sense of what's really on the back of this storm. And I love this thought here. Jesus identified satanic activity on the back of the storm. He knew he was going to the other side. The storm, out of, the storm popped out of nowhere. Where did it come from? Then the Bible says Jesus with Peter's mother-in-law rebuked a fever uh, that she was sick and was almost about to die. And the fever left her. What did he do? He assessed the nature of it. You know, Jesus rebuked demons and you can't rebuke something that's impersonal, inanimate. And so I want to encourage you, we can take authority over everything that's happening right now in our lives. And then the third thing that Jesus had to do was he had to deal with the biggest storm of them all. And that was the storm of actually not was on the lake, but the storm of where their faith was. Notice Jesus didn't say, why don't you have any faith? Why didn't he say you have little faith? Matter of fact, they had great faith. We heard them speak their faith. Master, master, don't you care? We're going to drown. And I want to encourage you and I to understand the application of this. Because on the other side of this message, I'm going to talk to you about not only just, he didn't just say, where is your faith? But I want to show you where you should place your faith. Here, let me tell you where their faith was. Their faith was in the storm. We heard them speak it. Master, master, we're going to drown. They believed this was going to be the end of them. They spoke it out. Adversity introduces you to yourself. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. They woke Jesus up. This is it. We're going down. But Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. Jesus knew where he was going. He went to sleep to give them the opportunity. Where is your faith? In other words, Jesus is saying, you could have done this. You could have taken authority. He was actually giving them a chance to rise up. And I want to come back on the other side of this message and I want to show you where I believe our faith should be and I can't wait to teach it. It's going to be awesome. So right now, we're going to have a quick testimony. You're going to love this and then we're going to come back. Whatever you do, don't go away. Stay with us. I'm going to show you there's basically two places we're supposed to keep our faith. I look forward to seeing you in just a moment. My name is Melissa Bird, and I was in a community group that read a book by Christine Kane. Um, and it was just amazing, the things that happened during that, that time. Uh, we met weekly, and I, I just met some amazing women who were at various stages of their life, you know, many my age, some younger. Um, and it was just a neat opportunity to come together with a diverse group of women who uh, are living life and doing what they can do to survive sometimes or to thrive and, um, and just move forward in just an amazing way. Um, it, the whole time, every week that we were together, um, women shared their hearts in such a way that you couldn't help but have your faith built and restored if you needed it restored. We heard stories of women who, um, as they began to open up and just really peel back some layers, they would tell the stories of some difficulties they'd been through. And what was so cool is how God just wove this tapestry of people together who could lift each other up because they'd been there and they were they're living it and just to come together and just really restore their faith and let them know that there is hope. You should join a community group because it does give you that opportunity to meet people, uh, new people that you might not ordinarily think you have anything in common with. Because when it, you get down to the nitty gritty, we all have something in common, even on the smallest level. But the opportunity to come together and be become more close in a relationship it just gives you that chance to know that you're not alone in this world. And so being a part of community group really reinforces that relationship is necessary and important. What an amazing testimony that is, just the importance of community groups. So we talked so far about this great story of Jesus going to the other side. He said to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. And they woke him up and said, Jesus, we're going down. And Jesus said, where is your faith? He wasn't saying you don't have it. He was saying it was misguided. Oh, they had faith. They spoke it out real loud. This is it. I knew this was going to happen. Job put it this way. That which I feared the most came unto me. That which I greatly feared came upon me. Can I tell you, we got to learn how to take authority over what's happening in the atmosphere. We got to learn how to take authority over what we're hearing and make sure we've got the Word of God. Let me show you where I believe they should have placed their faith. 
Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. It says, For he himself said, I will never leave you, I'll forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Because he has said, We can say. I want to tell you, we can say whatever the Lord says. You can't put words in God's mouth, but you sure can say whatever He has said, you can say. Matter of fact, their faith was in the storm rather than anchored on the words of Jesus. Listen to what it says in 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith, watch this now, according to what is written. I love this. I believed and therefore I spoke. And it says, we also believe and therefore speak. We have to make sure that before we speak, we know what we believe. And I want to encourage you. The other way that this question could have been asked is, where do you keep your faith? And I love this because I want to show you two places that I believe the Bible teaches us. When Jesus asks, where is your faith? Where should your faith be? Look at this. Come here. I, this is good. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 and verse 9 and verse 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you. By the way, this is taken straight out of Deuteronomy. The word is near you. It is in your watch, mouth, and it is in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Listen to the words now. If you declare with your, I'm giving you a chance. Come on, I know you're at home or heavy, you're watching, but I want to, he says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, Listen to that, that God raised from the dead. Watch, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believed and are justified. And it is with your mouth, watch, that you profess your faith and you are saved. I want you to look what the Bible says, that actually there's two places we're supposed to keep our faith. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. You ever heard someone say, my, my mouth, my heart was in my mouth. Well, that's a good place to have your heart if the right things are in your heart. You see, if your heart is full of fear and anxiety and depression, then all you're going to speak out is that fear and that anxiety and that depression. But if your heart is full of faith and your heart is in your mouth, then what's going to come out of your mouth is what's in your heart. And I just want to encourage us at the same principle of faith here. It's not enough to just have it in our heart. We've got to speak it. Some people say, well, I just believe in my heart. But the Bible says faith is voice activated. It's, it's a requirement unto salvation that we believe in our heart and we speak it out with our mouth. So in other words, our faith takes shape in spoken words. The word of faith, listen to this, has to penetrate our hearts. What word have you got in trouble? David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I just want to encourage you. Some people, when it comes to sickness or needs and, and all they talk about is that need and that problem and that challenge that you're facing, what word have you got? I love this. I wish I could do it. I can't. But I love sometimes to just get my Bible and say, Lord, I'm standing on your word and I can say whatever you have said. So it's two places. The word you speak, listen to this. I want you to catch this with your lips, seals your salvation. And Paul said, if you believe in your heart, confessing with your mouth, for with the mouth confession is made until salvation. Not with the mind, but with the mouth. I actually think you can talk yourself into salvation and you can talk yourself right out of it. I believe you can talk yourself into healing and blessing and you can talk yourself right out of it. You see, our mouths reveal what's in our heart and our mouths, catch this now, seals what's in your heart. Our mouth reveals what's in our heart. And listen to this. Our, listen to it again. Our mouth, catch this, seals. You'll have 
whatever you say. I want to show you something here in Proverbs 16, verse 30. It says, moving his lips. It says, if you've played the fool, if you've planned evil in your heart, moving his lips, he brings evil to pass. Not his hands, but his lips, he brings evil to pass. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. It says here in Proverbs 30, verse 32, if you played the fool, watch this, and you exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, watch, clap your hand over your mouth. Come on, everybody, right now. We're watching online, wherever you are. Give it a shot right now. Come on, interact with me. I want you to think about there's something that's coming up on the inside of you that maybe it's a fear and anxiety. You gotta learn, don't let it come out of your mouth because your, your mouth reveals what's in your heart and your mouth seals what's in your heart. You'll have whatever you say. So rather than say, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, that'll, that'll never happen to me. I won't, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose my job. Um, you know, I'm going to go down. Come on, right now, everybody, put your hand over your own mouth because we're socially distancing, right? And so just put your hand over your own mouth and then afterwards, make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> but look what the Bible says here. It says, if you thought evil and if you speak evil, uh, it says you seal with your lips what's in your heart. So if you have evil in your heart, put your hands over your mouth. Don't let it come out. If you have fear in your heart, put your hand over your mouth. Don't let it come out. So the answer to the question is our faith should have been in the words of Jesus. He said, let's go over. He didn't say, let's go halfway out and all die. He said, we're going to the other side. We've got unfulfilled destiny. We've got things to do, people to see, demons to conquer. We've got land to take. We've got a, a, a purpose in our life. And we're not only going to get to the other side, but we, when we get there, we're going to bring freedom, life, and liberty. Listen to what Paul says in Psalm 39, verse 3. My heart, I watch, I'm closing right now. Watch this. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then spoke I with my tongue. Here's the thought don't speak until, listen to it, your heart is on fire. Make sure, listen to it one more time. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Make sure you're meditating on the Word of God. Make sure your heart is on fire with the Word of the Lord and then know what it is to speak. One more scripture here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 33. Are you enjoying this? Man, I'm loving preaching it. Uh, it says here, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. Do you know, in times like this, we got to hold fast to the confession, the profession of our faith. I've heard people say, I know the Bible says, I know. Well, but that's not holding fast. Jehovah Jireh, He is my provider. He will supply all my needs according to His riches and His glory. He is the lifter of my head. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Come on, somebody. You gotta learn to hold fast to the profession of your faith. I'm believing God in the name of Jesus for a cure for this coronavirus. I'm believing God for this to sit down. I'm believing God, I'm rebuking this in the name of Jesus. There is fear on the back of this. There is anxiety. There is depression on the back of this. None of those things are from God. Come on, where is your faith? Amen, amen. Well, I think that's a good word. I want to pray for everybody right now. I want to take time right now to pray for you. And I'm going to ask God to help us have a spirit of faith, to understand what it is to hold fast to the profession of our faith. He is the lifter of your head. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is your healer. He is our God. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the same yesterday, today, 
and forever. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the, the wings of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, in Him will I trust. Amen. Come on. let's, Father, I'm asking you right now, let faith come. Lord, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing from the Word of God. How important it is in these times that we don't just hear all the news updates and all that's happening that is bad in our world. But Lord, how important it is we're in a community of faith. We're in an environment and an atmosphere. We come to You believing that You are and that You are a rewarder of those who diligently seek You. And God, I'm asking right now, let fear be gone. Let anxiety be gone. Let depression be gone. Let us, Lord, hear the Word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying right now for people who are sick and I'm asking God, heal them. Lord, sinuses. Lord, I thank You in the name of Jesus. People who are fearful right now, I thank You, Lord, that You have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. In Jesus' name. Church, we love you. Next Sunday, it's going to be Easter. And I've got a message for you. I haven't preached it before. It's called Resurrecting Hope. And I want to encourage you to do everything you can to get everybody watching next Sunday on our Resurrecting Hope Easter Sunday. It is going to be amazing in Jesus' name. I love you, church. God bless. I told you, Wave LA, what a phenomenal word. And if today you made a decision, please make sure that you click in the comments below or check out our website. We actually have a little tab that you can click and you can say, I made a decision. And we would love to pray with you and we would love to pray for you. We're so proud of the decision that you made today. You know, as we're talking about prayer requests and things that you can do, you know, you can download our app and you can fill out virtual prayer requests. We also, you can do, go ahead and email us at info at wavelosangeles.com. And we've got some prayer requests this week. We've got some praise reports. And you know, we're praying for our medical personnel. You know, we've got some medical personnel, nurses and doctors that go to our church. And I just want you to know, we are praying for you praying a hedge of protection. And we declared this verse last year, those who refresh others will be refreshed. And we're just praying that over all of the healthcare workers that are helping others in this time, that we're praying that God will protect you and then also fill you up with energy, fill you up with joy, fill you up with health in the name of Jesus. So many other ones that we're praying for, some sicknesses. We're praying for you, Gary, in the hospital this week. Darcy, we got your prayer request. We're praying for Gary. Gary, we declare in the name of Jesus, by His stripes, you are healed. And we've even got some great praise reports of somebody saying they're thanking God that we're still able to connect with our community groups. And uh, I just think that that's amazing. If you haven't signed up yet, you better. We've got so many different ways that you can get connected. Maybe you're uh, here for the very first time. You can go on to our website, wavelosangeles.com. Click on I'm new. We'd reach out to you, see what we can do, get you involved with the community group. Maybe you joined us late. You want to go online and, and do giving and be generous. You can do that. Or maybe you have a prayer request. We would love for you to fill one of those out so that we can pray with you and for you. But would you do something with me right Right now, would you just stretch forth your hands towards that laptop? Or if you've got the app on your TV, come on, put it towards the TV. Or if you're watching on your iPhone, let's have a moment of connection. Let's have a moment of faith where we believe that people are getting healed. We believe God is going to provide breakthroughs for people's finances. And we are praying for our world and our nation. Come on, stretch forth your hands. Father God, we pray for every person that is sick. We declare right now, healing, miracles in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for every single person that is struggling financially, whether their job has asked them to take a pay cut or they're unemployed. Father God, we pray right now, your word says that you're Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. So make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And Father God, we just pray for our world. We pray for our nation that Father God, we will not bend, we will not break, but we will only get stronger because of you. God, 
we thank you that right now greater is he that's in us than anything that we're facing in the world. And we are going to get through this and we are going to be stronger on the other side. We're so thankful for it, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, we love you so much. And uh, you know what? This is Palm Sunday, which means one thing. Next week is Easter. And we have a phenomenal online experience that I believe is actually going to be one of our best services of the year. You know, the early church, actually that first Easter Sunday <laughs> was not in a big church building yet actually with a few disciples and uh and you know what they did when they heard about the resurrection they went to the home where the disciples were at you know what this easter that's what we're doing we're taking the message of jesus that he is resurrected and we're going to the disciples you and i's house and talking about this miracle. It's gonna be our finest hour. And you know, uh, usually on Easter, we rent out the Hermosa Beach Playhouse. You know what though? That doesn't mean that we don't invite people, we don't share, we don't let them know, hey, to, uh, this week is Easter. Join me uh, and, and be a part of my Facebook group. Maybe you can share the Facebook story saying, come on, we're gonna have an incredible Sunday and we're expecting people's lives to be changed, and we're also expecting a, a, a message of hope because it is Resurrection Sunday. Can't wait to be with you on one of our best services this year, Easter Sunday. What is up, Wave Kids? Happy Sunday, virtual high five. Did you guys get there in time? Let's do it again. High five. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good morning so far. I shaved today for the first time in a while. You should have seen it before, but we're worshiping Jesus today. We're looking nice. It's gonna be a good lesson. Two words, not worry. That's the lesson is about today, and we're gonna focus on just positivity this upcoming week. I miss you guys all so much. Keep in contact with us, keep doing the challenges. Wave Kids LA, you guys are crushing it. High fives for all of you. We're gonna jump into this lesson. Still doing high fives. Enjoy the night. Fine challenge are we gonna do today? We don't know. I'm freaking out. Hey, Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. It's a Hi, I'm Ricky. And I'm Jamie, and all this month we're talking about fear, hence the spooky music. I'm really worried. Yeah, usually, full disclosure, we have some clue as to what our challenge is gonna be here in the Loop Show, and this is our script, and it's mostly blacked out. I think this word says smoke. I'm really, really nervous. I'm afraid of the unknown. Pretty sure this bit says, have a first aid kit nearby. Jamie, what if it's snakes and they're venomous this time? I don't wanna die. We have lived such a death-free life so far. What if we have to eat worms? The only thing worse than death would be eating worms. What if it really is dangerous? <gasps> Thank you, Mystery Hand. See you upstairs in five minutes, dot, dot, dot. Oh no, five minutes. That's such a short amount of time. This is turning into a melodrama. Oh, oh no. my word. Five minutes. The agony. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. I love to read. It's one of my favorite things when I was a kid. The thing I got in trouble for was I was supposed to be cleaning my room and I'd be in there reading and then like throw the book under my bed when my mom came. You know what I'd never read? Goosebumps. These things are creepy and gross. I do not do scary. It gives me nightmares. I stay late at night. Mm -mm. Beast from the East? This looks like a koala bear that fell in electric Kool-Aid and hulked out and grew claws. No, thank you. Monster's blood? It's like green goo dripping down creepy haunted stairs. I'm out. Terror in the night tower? I'm sorry, an executioner right before bed? Please. Why I'm afraid of bees? Okay, now this one, this one I could do because I'm actually not afraid of bees. You know what I am afraid of? Cricket! They are so gross and dark and jumpy and germy, you never know where they're coming from and which they're, they're gonna jump. It's 
Well, the reason I don't do scary is because I fill my head with these stories of what if. What if, what if it's gonna happen when I take the trash out and there's actually a bad guy hanging behind the trash like ready to scoop me up or do something terrible. One time, I actually hid after watching Lord of the Rings and all these monster scenes. It was the middle of the afternoon and a neighborhood kid came to knock on the door and sell me cookies and I was too afraid I hid up on the stairs. I couldn't even come down. I'm too scared. I hate these what if stories. But we have all of these questions. We fill our minds with what if. What if something terrible happens? What if there's a natural disaster? I'm worried. What if my parents split up? What if I show up to school and I thought I had a cool new lunch pail, but actually everybody buys lunch here. Now what am I gonna do? We are worried and we fill our minds with these stories and these what ifs. What are we gonna do? And our days start with dread. Hello and welcome to Scary Stories by me, Nick Dillard. <laughs> 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 Scariest thing you can ever ask, what if? Never ask yourself that because chances are you're gonna come up with some ridiculous story. For example, what if tomorrow you bite into your ham sandwich that you slaved over or your mom slaved over or your dad? I don't know who did it, but there's dog hair in it and somehow it's wet. I'll be okay. Guys, what if you finally get the courage to talk to the girl of your dreams. And somehow, you just burp. First thing you say, you just burp. Hey, Jessica, I uh, I really look, <clears throat> I like you a, a lot. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I love you. And ladies, the reverse role. What if the guy of your dreams walks up very mysterious-like because you love the mysterious ones and says, <clears throat> I don't even know how to respond to that. Maybe it was accidental. We'll never know. What if you like gummy bears like these and they decide that they want to eat you, huh? Let me tell you, it's it wouldn't be good. <coughs> it wouldn't be good. Not today. Not today. You're mine. I'm eating you, okay? What if it's report card day and you show your parents and they decide that's not good enough, so they decide to feed you like the dog and you have to eat on the ground. That's not fun. I've tried it. Look at your dog. He's not having a good time. That's why he's looking up at your food. What happens if aliens show up just randomly? What if they came for your Xbox, huh? No more Fortnite. What if they take your phones too? All sort of electronic devices where you can't play Fortnite anymore. Heaven forbid. You know what? Maybe that would be a good thing. What if? What if one of your friends actually dug a hole to China all the way through the earth and you actually fell in it? Would that be fun? Maybe for the first 30 seconds, then it might get boring, and then it might get really hot. What would happen if you're lit like this for the rest of your life? No more good selfies. And you know what? What if you never become famous? What if no one really sees you? What if you lose your athletic skills? What if you lose your looks? What if you choose the wrong path? What if you worry so much you actually make yourself sick physically? What if all of that happened? Okay, smoke scream challenge, oh boy. Enter the room of smoke, find the colorful globs you need and throw them at your designated area on the glass. The first person to find and stick 10 globs to the glass is the winner. Your prize is information. You get to know what the challenge is next week. Knowledge is... Oh my gosh. So we're supposed to go in there and find 10 of these globs. And so we're supposed to stand at the designated area in front of that and then throw the globs. And whoever gets 10 wins. It's so cloudy. You want to know what I think? <laughs> I think there's a person underneath all that crinkled oh, that's, paper. It's great. This is great. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> go. Okay. Uh, and go. A glob. A glob. Looking for a glob. Looking for a glob. Okay. Ah, uh, no. How did you find one already? <sighs> Where are the glob? Oh, I found a glob. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, am I allowed to get it? Ah! Ah! You scared me. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Dead. Ah! Okay. What if I try, okay. like, throwing it? Like, I got it. Ah! Great. <laughs> Ricky, you are scaring me. Glob, glob, glob. Okay. Okay, I found it. Hey, that's my glob. No, that's my glob. Take it. This is glob. Ah! Oh. Ah. 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 Ah.
Stomach hurts. I hope no one's around. Uh, I'll never be funny in that. I have a car in Oh no, my pencil. I'm gonna get such a thimber. Do I have a cookie? These wings make me look fat. I'm afraid of heights. My passport. I'm my shoes untied. I'm never gonna be good enough. I'm never gonna be as good as my brother. Never, ever, in a million years am I gonna be as good as my brother. My brother could be anything he wants to be. It could be, I'm just going to sit right here. I'm just going to cry, cry in the grass. I'm just going to cry in the grass because I can't be as good as my... Oh, there's my brother. I saved up all my money and I bought my dress at Greenhouse Gowns. I hope no one else has the same dress. Twinsies! Mom? Build your own house. They said it'll be easy. Not this. This isn't easy. Oh, it's going to be terrible. I'm going to be alone my whole life. No one's going to love me ever. I'm never, ever going to finish this house that I just made for myself. Whoop, I finished my house. Look at that. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, look, it's all lumpy. Mama said I'd be the next avian idol. I don't think so. I can all sing. Oh, what if I get up there? What if I vomit? What if I fart? Oh, what if I do both at the same time? <laughs> What if my friends laugh at me? I'll never be able to live this down. Ooh. What a voice. Who, me? <laughs> nice shoes. Good win, RV. <laughs> my shoes. Shoes. Um, no, my mom got them on sale. You, you don't like them? Your shoes. Uh, what, 
Wait, what's wrong with my shoes? The shoes! Okay, class, I have Look out, birds! Questions. I have questions. Yes, you have a question? I got a question. I got a question. I got him. Uh, question. <laughs> I have a question for you. You see how scared those talking birds? That's me. I'm, j I'm jump scare Jimmy. And I'm the king of the jump scares. <laughs> you never know when I'm going to show up next. So, look out. What's next? So when I was your age, my parents had just moved us and I felt like I was worried about everything. And I kept this journal and I wrote all kinds of stuff in it. I wrote the friend that I was worried about making, the friend that I was worried about leaving. I worried about boy that may or may not like me and did I have the right haircut. We moved from the city to the country and I didn't understand cattle and fields and did I have the right shoes and did I have the right jeans? And I just worried about everything. But here's the thing. Jesus said to us in Matthew 6, guys, what are you worried about? Look at the birds and the flowers of the field. Do you think they're worried about what they're gonna eat and where their house is and what they're gonna wear? No, your father loves them and he feeds them and clothes them. How much more does he love us? So what do I do? I pray. And I don't mean that like, oh, I know you've got a math test, I'm gonna be praying for you. Or, oh, your dog has to go to the doctor, I'll pray for you. I mean, I pray. I actually talk to God. I talk to him when I'm getting ready and eating breakfast and on my way places and at night and sometimes late at night when I can't sleep, I pray. I take all of that worry and I just don't write down what I'm worried about. I pray and ask God, what does he want me to do right now? What is it he's trying to tell me? What's the scripture that I'm reading that comes alive and feels like it's giving air to my lungs? What song did come on the radio that, man, gave me life? I write it down because I want to remember the peace that God is giving me. So what does that mean? What does it mean to live with peace? Well, worry is when we live with this attitude that's like, what might happen? But peace is when we live knowing that God is mightier. Peace is when we live knowing that he will never let us be shaken. It was awful. We barely made it. But I won. Of course you did. What's my prize? Oh, thank you, mystery hand. Next week's challenge. <gasps> what? What's next week's challenge? I can't tell you! Why not? Oh my good. No. What is it? If I give it back to the mystery hand, can that make it not true? What? Is what is it? Ugh. I can't tell you. You can't. That, that's worse than whatever oh, it could possibly it's be. It's awful. No, trust me. It's worse. <sighs> It's worse. It didn't say that I couldn't, like, pantomime what it is, but okay. I can't tell you okay. what it is. Okay, pantomime. What is it? Oh, no, no. But there's something worse than that. Again? No. no. No, it's not again. It's the first time first time to have this on the show. We're interviewing for a new co-host for The Loop Show because I'm not going to be doing it. Not if these things are going to be on it. Uh, if these things are here, no, you're staying in here with me. No, we, one of us has to stay. Yeah. They it, can't lose Ricky and Jamie. If you're sitting there finding yourself worried about tomorrow, try thinking of this. Peace beats worry. There's lots of things to be worried about like these, but God didn't create us to be worried all the time. You can trust that he's got you. God can calm all our fears, so give it to him and enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. But like this. I know, and like, this. It's just awful. It's just awful. So many of us are wrestling with these different worries and fears in our lives, but today we learned that peace beats worry. That we're invited to experience true and real peace. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray together? God, we thank you so much for this reality that you invite us to experience peace, that these worries that so many of us wrestle with and struggle with don't have to rule us, but instead we can enter into the peace that you offer. With every head bowed and every eye closed, there are some of you here today and all you've ever known is worry. All you've ever known is fear. And this idea of having peace, you're, you're, you're hearing this and you want that. I wanna tell you about a guy named Jesus. So 2,000 years ago, this guy named Jesus came to live on the earth. This is God's son. He lived a perfect life and died a brutal death to die for your sins and for mine. Because all of us as human beings, we've made mistakes. We've done things that have hurt us, others, and the heart of God. And what Jesus did is he made a way for us to be made right with God. 
to be forgiven of our sins, to let go of our worries and enter into the peace that God wants for you. And as you're hearing this, you know that that's what you've been missing and that's what you need. You want a relationship with Jesus and to experience the peace that he offers. If that's you, then lift your hand right now. As hands are going up, make some noise, cheer and celebrate and repeat this prayer after me all together. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning toward you. I need your peace. I need your love. I need your grace. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. That's the best choice you could ever make. And we are so proud of you. Before you leave, talk to your small group leaders so they can talk to you about what it means to follow Jesus and to live a life for him. Um, I'm, I'm getting a cold, so I might be out sick next week on yeah. the Loop Show. And my throat's hurting real bad. So uh, if you'd like to fill in as host, um, you have to A, uh, be subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, like this video, leave a comment uh, telling us if you are comfortable with living nightmares. What is up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to the lesson today. Happy Sunday once again. Seriously, miss you guys all so much. And even though this is a video, right, we're not actually in person, I just want to pray over all of you and just wish you guys a great week. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me to be able to pray over these kids right now and having this opportunity. Please help them to have a good upcoming week, Lord, and to not worry. Lord, just to focus on you, focus on spending time with their family, and just use this time to grow. Lord, not use this time to worry, but to grow and try to have fun. Spend time in your word, Lord, and just spend time praying with you or whatever it may be, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. I love these kids. Please watch over them and their families. And in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome, guys. Seriously, have a good week. High fives again. High fives. Crush it. And I'll see you guys later.